What's up YouTube, Sonic Kevin here. And as some of you might know, I recently built a new PC. Now, before you start typing in the comments asking, Kevin, what parts did you use? The fast answer is a 5950X and a 3090. I also have a parts list down in the description below so you can check out everything I'm currently using in this rig. I started planning this build around early January of this year but it's only until now that I've been able to get all the parts that I wanted without paying over 100% markup. I do want to talk about my experience using this PC and the comparisons to my old system both from a gaming and a workstation standpoint but before we get into that let's roll the montage. Straight off the bat, we have a major upgrade coming in from the 6 core 12 thread 8700K into the 16 core 30T thread 5950X. For future proofing, I thought it'd only be right to pair this incredible CPU with the 3090. Now I could have reused the 32GB RAM kit, 
that I had, but I wanted to upgrade to a higher frequency to take advantage of Ryzen's Infinity Fabric. After looking around, I decided on a 64 gigabyte Trident Z RGB kit at 3600 MHz with a cast latency of 14. I've always had a positive experience using EVGA power supplies for all the builds that I've done. So when I saw an opportunity to snag a 1000 watt PSU at MSRP, it was a no brainer. When it comes down to cooling, I like to keep things simple, especially on systems that are part of my daily workflow. And so a 360 millimeter AIO top mounted was an easy choice. While building a custom loop is probably a lot of fun and nice to look at, the maintenance routine is a lot more tedious and also has more points of failure. Maybe that can be something we can do in the future though. This PC was my first time using an M.2 SSD and having one less cable to manage is nice. I also added an extra one terabyte SATA SSD so I can have more room for media and cache files and maybe install some extra games on there as well. Importing files, editing and rendering performance have all improved as expected and having 64 gigs of RAM has really let me go ham with the Chrome tabs. Feel free to guess the number of tabs that automatically open when I start Chrome in the comments down below. Here's a hint, it's in the double digits. In terms of game performance, I've recently been playing Apex more, which is definitely a more GPU intensive game. And while I can still easily hold 240 FPS here, you do still have to cap your game at 189 FPS to avoid stuttering and input latency that occurs at higher FPS values. This is due to a limitation with Apex's game engine. In a CPU bound game like Valorant, my personal test for shooting bots in the firing range averaged around 350, so if I had to guess, I'd probably fluctuate between 300 and 500 FPS throughout the course of a normal match. I do want to try out more games, but recently I have been catching up on work from the downtime of doing this build. We'll definitely be trying out Battlefield 2042 and Forza Horizon 5 once Q4 rolls around so we can look to expand our stats from there. That's it for the video. I've been enjoying making the occasional tech videos, whether it be a system upgrade or some new peripherals. So when more interesting things show up in the future, we might be able to do another setup update. Thanks again for watching it all the way through. I'm Psionic Kevin, and you can follow me on Twitch and the social media links down below. Peace.